Well, I've been involved, as you know, with mostly advanced stage exploration projects, feasibility level projects. Um, a lot of that in the management of the project and database management compilation. And um, basically, we base everything, all the, the, the decisions we make as an exploration company or mining company are based on the assays we receive from any project we're working on. And so not having a third party check on your assays is taking a lot for granted that the lab is actually doing a good job with their own internal uh, quality control systems. And I've seen cases where the internal control systems are working just fine, but the project specific quality control samples have come back uh, out of tolerance or out of the acceptable limits. So without, without a third party check, you really can't say or can't give a quality measure to, to your assay database. My background is I started work in analytical chemistry back in 1971 working for iron ore companies, nickel mines, gold mines, copper mines, salt mines. And I've managed laboratories from 50 people up to 800 people. And that's why I'm enthused if we're getting to a stage where we're going to be looking at in-house quality control data um, because I think it's a far better reflection of what a routine analytical laboratory can do. As an assay lab, we pose many obstacles, challenges for the mining companies themselves. Uh, assay labs have inherent bias. Uh, not only that, it's a, it's a bias that's in a state of flux because you constantly have changing uh, labor pool within each lab. And even though the lab does its best with its internal QA, QC to keep and provide a consistent uh, quality of results and a consistent uh, concentration of results, maybe it's if you figure that every lab has a bias to at least be able to provide a consistent bias. It's, it's really difficult to do when you have a change in the, in the labor force. A laboratory is a people business. We have very expensive equipment, but you know it's managed by people. Part of our job then is to manage those people to get reproducibility, to get accuracy, and that takes quite a bit of talent. There's people who believe that it's a black box and you just throw your samples in and the results come out. There's so many steps involved, so many people involved, and you need people with experience and you need techniques to be able to get the right answer. The major problem is um, transitioning from a sample you receive to where you get the end result and the end result needs to be the actual sample you started with. There's so many steps involved in there where you have to check that that in fact happens. With assays there's, you know, it's not always a right number or a wrong number. It's a number, but what level of confidence do you have with that number? And it's the level of confidence that we're always trying to optimise. And um, with Benchmark 6, it's going to identify laboratories where we can feel more co confidence in the numbers than maybe other laboratories. Another complication is the increasing variety and sophistication of instrumentation and procedures at laboratories. And they can and do produce different assays results for the same sample. I, I think we, we've all probably heard at some point in our life that um, phrase garbage in, garbage out. And it's never been truer in the modern world where a lot of important calculations are done with computers. Someone hands you a, 
a CD or a USB stick with a data file on it, you can plug that into a piece of software that starts calculating resource tonnages and grades, and you can do economic calculations off of that. But it's all nonsense if the data were wrong at the beginning. The whole point is, as an industry, we're supposed to be improving. I mean, we're involving a lot of money that we've taken from investors and, you know, decisions are being made on those and we want the best possible data. So as an industry, as it gets harder to raise money, I think you need to raise the confidence level. And I think we can do that with having experts advising on quality control because that gives you a snapshot of what's happening in a laboratory. If that snapshot is daily quality control, then hopefully you have a very good picture of what's going on. Uh, as a geologist, I want to make sure that the assay results are reliable and not uh, tarnished in any, any extent. Most people who are in the industry don't realize that unlike any other area of the law, in these kinds of cases, you're guilty until proven innocent. And we all find that kind of hard to understand. We see TV shows and the right to remain silent. What the law says in Canada is that where a company puts out a resource calculation or even a drill hole announcement, if it turns out later on that that press release is incorrect, and the charges are laid against the company and against the directors and officers of the company, the, the, those people have an absolute legal obligation to mount what we call a due diligence defense. And if they can't show, as we were able to show in John's case, that they took all reasonable precautions and reasonable measures to ensure that that press release was accurate, and they're going to be convicted, and, and upon conviction, there's a chance they could end up in jail. Assay information is driving the decisions about whether one truckload goes to the waste pile or it goes to the, the mill and is treated as ore. And in a single truckload of of uh, rock from a, a gold mine, if that truck is misclassified, that's a mistake that can easily run into the tens of thousands of dollars. 